Well, now that we've talked a little bit about oxidation and reduction reactions in corrosion, we're ready to move on to uh, talk about electrochemistry. So let's just begin by introducing what's known as the electrochemical half cell. Um, and I want to remind you just what we talked about in the previous lecture. When a metal oxidizes, it generates electrons. So if the metal is called M, uh, we go from M and it it uh, goes into an ion form and it um, it produces N electrons. So here I'm showing you iron uh, in some solution. And if, if that oxidizes, then the iron is going to give off these iron ions and this becomes now an ionic solution um, and then it's also going to generate some electrons that flow out of that as a result of the oxidation so the electron flow of course generates a current uh, which we're familiar with from uh, from our circuits uh, background so obviously you could measure that in amps or, or whatever so that's just coulombs per second uh, associated with that electron there's an there's a, a, a energy associated with it or a potential, and we call that the volts, right? That's the joules per coulomb, or you could think of it as just the energy per electron. So how do we, how are we supposed to think about this energy per electron um, uh, for the this uh, uh, electrochemical half cell and this oxidation reaction? Well, it acts as a potential energy. So let's think about a potential energy that we're uh, a bit more comfortable with as mechanical engineers. We're going to lift this box, and we can either put it on something a, a desk that's about waist height or a desk that's about uh, head height. And we know which one is going to be easier. And the reason that one's going to be easier over the other is that the short desk requires us to raise the potential energy uh, by a small amount, mgh1, whereas the tall um, desk or... or um, uh, structure requires us to live it, lift it by H G M G H two. Okay, so the lower potential is obviously going to be easier for us to do. So it represents, in this case, for the electrochemical half cell, a lower potential V represents an easier reaction. So it's going to be ha happen more readily, whereas a higher potential V uh, represents a harder reaction, more difficult. The thing I also want to point out, uh, if going back to our, our box on the desk analogy, is that if you want to, if the, the potential energy as we defined it there, mg, let's say h1, that h1 value is referenced to us standing on the floor. It's not an absolute number, right? If, if we suddenly pull the floor out, we're on the second floor, the potential energy instantly goes up because we've changed the reference. So remember that anytime we're talking about a potential energy, we require a reference. And in this particular uh, state, uh, this particular half cell, there isn't a reference. Okay, so now we want to talk about how we go about getting the reference. Well, and we, we introduce what's called the standard hydrogen electrode. Um, and it, this is just by convention that we're using a hydrogen half cell uh, for the reference. So uh, on, on what I'm showing you here is basically what I had um, in the previous slide. Now I'm just saying it's a metal, uh, giving off some metal ions and giving us a metal uh, solution. I'm being specific, though, uh, when, we're, when we're talking about a standard a hydrogen electrode, this particular half cell has to be a one molar solution. The other side of this is actually uh, a solution, a one molar solution of hydrogen ions with a platinum um, uh, a core uh, inserted. Now, uh, there's a separating membrane so that the solutions don't mix, and the temperature that this occurs at is set at 25 degrees C at a pressure of one atmosphere. So we're 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 controlling the environment very carefully, and we're going to bubble hydrogen gas uh, into the system. Uh, in order to maintain that one molar solution concentration. The platinum doesn't actually participate in the reaction. It only acts as a surface to either reduce the hydrogen atoms or to oxidize the hydrogen gas that's in there. So, and, so uh, every metal or metal alloy that we were to put in, let's say on the left side, we're going to um, evaluate the uh, voltage uh, that represents a potential across this couple. So uh, all metal oxidation reactions are going to be referenced against, against this uh, uh, hydrogen half cell, and we call this complete structure the standard hydrogen electrode. If we go ahead and tabulate uh, this v naught value for various metals, it yields uh, a table that we call the electromotive force series. And 
all it does is gives you that V naught value that we would have computed from the standard hydrogen electrode for various uh, uh, metals or metal alloys. And the feature here is that, just like we said before, the higher the voltage, the higher the potential, the more difficult it is to oxidize. So high V naught means hard to oxidize. And you, you kind of know that just looking at this series, right? You think of gold, you don't think of that as oxidizing very much. That's why we make jewelry out of it. It's because it stays unoxidized uh, uh, easily. And then on the other end, we have something that's easy to oxidize. These are very low values of V naught. Okay, so now that we, we've sort of defined the EMF series, we want to talk about something called a galvanic couple. So now we're going to go ahead and couple them, a couple one metal to another, both of which are going to be in their solutions, and we're going to ask what's going to happen. So in this case, I'm showing you uh, hydro, uh, sorry, iron as one of our metals and copper as the other metal. So we could determine what's going to happen with this particular system by looking at what the V naught values are from the EMF table. And so we look up copper, there it is, 0.34 volts. And we look up iron, there it is, negative uh, 0.44 volts. So um, we, we now know uh, that the lower the, the um, V naught value is the easier to produce electrons, the easier to oxidize. So we can now draw uh, the direction that our electrons are going to flow. And because it's easier to oxidize the iron and harder to oxidize the copper, we're going to flow electrons from the iron into the copper. And the, the, um, so we can define then the plus and minus side of this electrode, and we can then label the anode and the cathode. Remember, the anode is where oxidation happens. The cathode is where reduction happens. And so we can also describe the the total, the, the potential of this electrode as delta V naught, which is just the difference between the, the, um, the V naught values from the EMF series. And in this case, the, the potential is 0.78 volts. So what can we learn about all of this? Well, the first is that uh, a metal with a lower V naught is what is corroding, right? So uh, this iron is giving off uh, iron ions into solution and letting, and, and, uh, allowing electrons to flow out of it. Okay, so as that iron is giving up, uh, is converting to to iron ions in solution, it's eroding. So because the V naught value of the iron is less than the V naught value of the copper, the iron is the what is what actually corrodes. And so we can sort of draw that the corrosion occurs like that. Now what's all what's happening in the copper is that the electrons are flowing in, binding with the uh, ions in solution of the copper, and actually forming copper at the surface uh, in a process that we call electrodeposition. And so it actually grows. Um, so that's, that's how this galvanic couple works. Um, the driving force for the corrosion is obviously delta V naught, right? If there's no potential across there, then electrons aren't going to flow. But as long as there is a potential, electrons will flow. So in order, if we want to reduce corrosion, the best thing we can do is reduce the magnitude of the delta V naught value. And the reason I say the magnitude is because if we let it go negative, then all that happens is we switch which, which uh, metal becomes the anode and the cathode. But if, if delta V naught goes to zero, then we actually are reducing both corrosion and electrodeposition. Okay, so that's that's the uh, I think the bulk of uh, what's important about uh, how a galvanic couple works and how corrosion and electro deposition sort of work in tandem. Uh, but I want to just bring up again that this EMF series that we've talked about is based on uh, 25 degrees C at one molar solution concentration. So it's highly idealized. Uh, but we can account for different temperatures and concentrations using what's called the Nernst equation. And all it does is, is an equation that uh, uh, it, it, it modifies the delta V naught that we would compute from the EMF series uh, based on the concentrations of the ions in solution as well as the temperature. So the this delta V naught, that's the EMF potential we would look up. 
the n corresponds to the number of electrons in half cell reactions. So in our previous example, we had Fe going to Fe2 plus, so n would be 2. Um, uh, F is what's called the Faraday constant, and all that is is the the charge, uh, the electron charge per mole of material. And you can look that up in a book. It, it, it's, it's just a constant value. And then these m one n plus m two n plus are the molar ion concentrations uh, of those uh, solutions, and so uh, you can see how those also can change what the the real potential is over what the EMF potential would be. Okay, so why does this all matter? Well, I want to tell you one first that reactions are going to happen spontaneously when delta v the the the, the voltage potential is greater than zero. Um, so if you look at this equation, you can choose you could choose a delta v naught to be greater than zero, but you could adjust the temperature and or the molar concentrations in such a way that uh, by changing either either or both, you could actually stop or reverse the reactions and changing you know the cathode to the anode and the anode to the cathode. Uh, so just be aware that the the environment that it's in uh, can play a role as well in terms of the um, the likelihood of, of reaction as well as even the direction that the reaction proceeds. Okay, one final uh, um, table or calculation that I want to make you aware of is, is what's called the galvanic series. And this is probably actually more uh, practically used in engineering applications because unlike the EMF series that required us to use a standard hydrogen electrode, the galvanic series represents the reactivity of metals and alloys in seawater which is a, a bit more um, useful for most of our design purposes. But you will notice that there's a high correlation from the galvanic series to the EMF series. Uh, one other difference is that in the EMF series, we actually get a voltage V naught value uh, for each oxidation reaction. Uh, in the galvanic series, we're just getting a relative ranking. Um, so the further apart um, two, two metals are in the galvanic series, the larger the delta V even if we don't know what the delta V is. So um, same thing as the EMF series, uh, the, near the top of the galvanic series, those materials are hard to oxidize and they tend to be cathodes or more cathodic, or car as, as it says. And the, at the bottom of the series, it's much easier to oxidize. So those are gonna be more uh, anodic or active. Um, so that, that sort of concludes what you need to know about electrochemistry uh, before we uh, uh, go on to talk about other uh, issues and mitigation techniques uh, for corrosion.